Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Today some more fantastic Warhammer goodies to show you. Games Workshop very very kindly sent me this fantastic terrain set. It's in a huge box as you can see. It is Battlezone Frontieris Natchmund or Natchmund. Now because I say Necromunda instead of Necromunda for some bizarre reason, I guess I'm going to say Natchmund for this one instead of Natchmund. But call it anything you like. Inside we have a truly amazing amount of terrain for Warhammer 40,000. There's not only a huge amount of terrain in here, there's two battle boards as well. I'm going to show you what's inside this box and then I'm going to put it together and show you what it looks like when it's all set up on the battle boards. Stay with me and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. Now the first thing you might notice is that all this terrain comes in a beautiful thick cardboard glossy box and this is great because I love storing things in their original boxes on my shelf. So this is a great box to store terrain in or Warhammer 40,000 figures or anything you like really. It'll look great on your shelf and it's hard wearing. So let's see what you get inside. Plastic, 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 heaps and heaps of plastic. You can see we've got this fantastic landing pad. Look at the size of that, really big. And some really chunky terrain pieces here. Very impressive indeed. Now, what do you get inside this set, I hear you ask? Well, there are two STC HAB bunkers, six stockades, two stockades with doors, one landing pad, one Vox antenna and one Orspex Shrine. So there's a heap of stuff packed in here. Now I did a little bit of calculation. Uh, this set you can get for 400 New Zealand dollars. And if you bought all those uh, pieces individually, it would add up to 540 New Zealand dollars. And that wouldn't count the cost of the two battle boards, which I think is another, well, it's, they're quite expensive, the battle boards. I don't know why, because they're just cardboard, but uh, yeah. Terrain alone, you're saving a lot of money if you get it all in one go. And you'll have enough Warhammer 40,000 terrain to last you for some time to come. And the great thing to, about terrain is, of course, is that it lasts forever. I have terrain that I bought back in the 80s and 90s that I still use. And it is still giving me lots of enjoyment for all my games. So, yeah, terrain is something that never goes out of style. And while it can be a bit of a hit to the wallet, Originally, you're going to get a lot of games out of it. So, some amazing sprues here with really, really chunky pieces on it. It's all very well looking at sprues though. What we want to see is it all put together and I will show you that. I've got a few evenings of building to do and a lot of unclipping and gluing. And then we'll show you this in all its glory. Now, down the bottom, look at all that plastic by the way. Check this out. That is a lot of stuff. Wow. Now, of course, you've got your book for putting it all together. And it's relatively straightforward. There's only a few pages here. Because they're big, chunky pieces. So it's really not going to take too much time to build. So you've got a piece of card here that protects your boards from the plastic. And then down the bottom, two nice, big cardboard battle boards. Double sided of course. So folks let's put all this plastic together and I'll show you how this looks. I think it's going to be pretty impressive. Let's get started. Well folks check this out. It's a pretty impressive tabletop. I have to say when you make it all up I've got a few figures in here for scale. Of course Space Marines are so unbelievably huge they make everything look small but if you have normal figures um, they look great uh, at this scale looks fantastic. Space Marines are just so huge. How do they fit through doorways? It's bizarre. The whole, you know, Imperium must be designed around... Well, it is, isn't it? It's all huge scale. I'm rambling now. Anyway, this is a very impressive set, I've got to say. Now, what I've done is a few things just to make it a little bit more um, usable. And what I've done is done a bit of magnetising. So, rather than glue any of these bits, i put magnets on them. These magnets are 4mm wide by 1.5mm deep and I just used a 4mm drill bit to drill the hole in and then just super glued them in. And then on these corner pieces I put another little magnet there and then on the other side where it joins 
So this is a corner piece. And then the only other tricky thing I've done is added a magnet to these bits. Now there's this bit at the end, which is a little cap piece that attaches to the building and then attaches to the to the to the uh, stockade. So you can see there's a magnet in that as well. So that just magnetizes onto the end, like so, and then fits into the spot like that. So this way everything magnetizes together, it makes it a bit more solid on the tabletop and allows me to reconfigure. Now the only thing that was slightly disappointing is when I made this particular configuration, which is the same one as the back of the box, they sort of fudged it a little bit because this piece, when it comes around, doesn't actually fit into its slot on the wall, it doesn't line up. I don't know why that is, you'd think to be able to work it out so this configuration fitted together in the right spot. I couldn't get it to do that. It'll just rest against the wall, which is fine, but it didn't kind of slot in. So um, obviously every configuration is not going to work perfectly, but you still have quite a lot here to, you know, do different things with. There's some bits that I absolutely love. I love this fantastic antenna thing. This is, this is really impressive. Um, I've also magnetized just there and there. So these will magnetize together and that way I can do it in like so or I can turn it around and make it a vertical configuration as well. Nice choice there. I always prefer to sort of magnetize things so I have a bit of choice and I don't have to glue it and keep it that way forever. Uh, this Auspex Shrine is a really nice impressive piece, nice and tall. I mean of course everything is kind of low to the ground, there's not a lot of cover for you know large uh, models here, it's mainly infantry sized. But these stockades are really nice for hiding your infantry behind. And the buildings are a really impressive line of sight blockers. The other thing about the buildings as well, now they've got these bits on the end, which are just walls. I could magnetize those as well. I, they don't grab me the way they just sort of sit at the end. So, you know, may use those for other things. Um, but these particular buildings, you don't have to glue together because they slot together quite nicely. You can just plonk on the roof section like that. And then these just slot like this, as you can see, and come apart. So uh, I see no reason really to glue those. You could paint those bits separately and then they just slot together, which is quite nice. There's also a few bits left over. There's some ruined uh, roof sections if you want to just make the, the roof ruined. And then some extra doors and things if you want to stick those in funny positions. The other thing you could do is get the landing pad, of course, just by itself without anything on it. Um, you could take one of these large buildings plonk it on there and that fits nicely on top of there so that's a pretty impressive taller building that's great and in fact you could probably just plonk that on the top like that as well and then just get this huge mammoth looking building with a uh, transmitter on the top there are a few things that frustrate me about this set mainly around modularity um, it is a little bit limited uh, making different setups that have the walls actually fit perfectly into these pieces here. There's only so many things you can do. I mean, here's your very basic kind of stockade setup. That works fine. Um, but then I thought, okay, well, if I want a wall sort of coming out for hit from here, well, I expected that this little piece that you put on the end to allow it to attach to a building wall would allow me to attach it to the wall itself. And it doesn't really work. There's no kind of way of doing it. Um, that doesn't attach to the uh, pieces in between the wall and if I take it off you know you're just resting against it. So that's kind of a shame if they designed this wall so this piece fitted into it as well then I could have a really nice clean join between those two parts but it doesn't let you do that. Um, because I think that there's something because of the proportions of it coming out here and everything when you start adding the landing pad to the other ones you can't always line up the walls so they do go into these individual pieces and you can see on the bunkers they've put um, this vent in here as well so you can't fit up to those two bits as well the wall section won't attach to those so that limits you as well so um, you're not necessarily going to have everything lining up perfectly um, I guess they expect you to come up with a setup and just glue it all together but I'm definitely not going to do that because I want to be able to move it around and do different things with it. Um, but it's a shame the walls don't actually join. That would have been a nice bit to kind of add to the functionality. Now keep in mind if you're magnetizing these to make sure you've got different polarities on each end of these and then when you're putting them into the corner pieces, these ones here, 
and these end pieces, uh, make sure you have a nice variety. So for these corner pieces, for example, I did some which had a different polarity on each of them, and a few that had the same the same polarity on each of them, just so I had some, I had some variety. It's worked out nicely, but you can of course come up to points where you make a configuration and go, oh, okay, they're not going to fit together because they're the same polarity. So um, or is it different polarity? I forget my high school magnet uh, class. But anyway, um, that will restrict you a little bit. But again, it's better than just having them sitting on the table without any sort of thing joining them together, I think. The important thing is, is that if you have different polarities on either end of it, you can see that it doesn't work. You can always just turn it around and bang, it will snap together. Here I've extended that stockade wall by another section and I've got enough space to fit the landing pad in it. So this is kind of impressive uh, fortification on a tabletop. If I take the satellite off, in fact, then you've got a fortified landing pad. In fact, let's add the Auspex Shrine to the front as well so it looks like some kind of guard tower as you're coming in. And of course, don't forget access to the landing pad itself. Though I always do prefer a good game mat made of mouse mat material for my gaming. These boards are really nice. I actually like these two designs because uh, they're nice and plain. They've just got a few sort of bits of concrete and stuff on them like that to make them look a bit more interesting. And uh, with these two boards, you can have larger games. And as you can see, this is a fantastic centerpiece for uh, a board that size. Well, there you have it, my friends. Uh, Battlezone Frontieris Natchmund. Natchmund. Whatever you want to call it. Um, a very impressive set of terrain. Now, like Ash Waste, which had a lot of terrain in it as well, it's a very expensive set. Um, but if you want all this terrain, it's certainly a lot cheaper to buy it all in one go like this than it is individually. And um, you'll end up with a fantastic centerpiece to a large uh, Warhammer 40,000 board. Of course, it doesn't have the verticality of some city ruins and things like that. But fortification wise, it's just spot on. And I absolutely love things like this big chunky satellite and this Auspex Shrine. They're really nice pieces. The landing pad is great too. Can be used in all sci-fi games, not just Warhammer 40,000, of course. And in fact, one of the good things about this set is that it's not really heavy on skulls and gothic details and everything. So it would be fine uh, for any other sci-fi game as well. They've cut back on that kind of stuff a little bit on, in this one, which is, I think is quite nice. Of course, I've got a lot of painting to do, uh, but you will be seeing this in future battle reports once I've painted it up and get it on the table. And hopefully uh, it'll make for some pretty spectacular uh, sessions of Warhammer 40,000 and other games. And I'll show them off on my channel in the future. This is the Esoteric Order of Game. It's I'm Peter, also known as Universal Head, and uh, there are many, many other videos for you to enjoy. Please subscribe to this channel, hit the all notifications button, check out the website at orderofgamers.com. You can search through 10 years of content, videos, rules, summaries, articles, interviews, all kinds of stuff there, and it's all searchable. I do recommend going to the website and checking it out. If you choose to support me in my gaming efforts, uh, you can go to my Patreon channel. And we've got an exclusive Discord channel for Patreon supporters, which is a really nice place to go. People show off their miniatures and have a chat and talk about games. It's a lot of fun. There's some nice people there. Also, of course, I'm on Twitter all the time and Facebook as well and uh, Instagram very occasionally. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time. Good gaming, everybody. Bye for now.